is what I found with um, MCM's site. This is a rendering, but nevertheless, I think this is the real deal, and they added rendering behind it, and they're showing the uh, a, a rendering of a concrete truck on a pour. If you look at my video I posted a time lapse, you'll see the this guy jumping around doing the installation of the concrete uh, on the on the on the time lapse. These these are the members in question. This is ten. That's eleven. Here's twelve. And as you can see, that's the upright, that's the far end. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Keep in mind, you you need balance between these members. These are both load bearing, although people will tell you they're not load bearing. This needs to be balanced. This and these two need to be balanced. Okay. If you notice, we, we everyone's wondering, and I was one of them, how did they put this together without creating a cold joint? Well, they didn't avoid a cold joint. They, it looks like they install a rebar um, from the lower from the canopy across and maybe down again, or these are epoxied in. And I think they are going up and down. And maybe this cage is made later. If we see here, if we look to the left, this is the question number 11 that everyone's talking about buckling. Okay. So this needs to be balanced. These are zero, zero products. In other words, they're not needed. This is not needed. This is not needed. The bridge could live without these in play. There's an if part here. The loads would come down, come through here, and land on the foundation, and out it goes on the on the uh, lower deck. But once you have post tensioning, as you can see, there's the pockets for it. Once you have post tensioning, though, that's a whole other animal to altogether. It's required to th this is required. This section here now becomes structural because it's needed to hold the end of the post tensioning. You just can't cut anywhere into this deck and make this deck survive. It cannot. You can't cut into the canopy in it and this deck survive. Hmm. So this is needed for the post tensioning, but it's not needed for for the uh, the uh, load path. The load path can come down. It can pass down this column here under compression and transfer its load to the base. The with that said, this post tensioning is part of the entire canopy, not just for the uh, the well maybe it is you know not just for the canopy though the post tensioning and here's the part maybe it is part so not just for the put there but also to help support the uh the load of the lower deck now that's a thought but now that thought is going to be kind of reversed and given back at the same time when i talk to you the thought is if this lower part of deck was all post tension to support all the loads of this lower deck and the top canopy, and the 16-inch um, pipes going to the cable stay bridge because they were dead weight. So that's one nice setup where all the post tensioning can take it. Now th th this is not, ABC doesn't make this the the, the magical um, why it's so revolutionary bridge. What my research has shown what makes it so revolutionary is the slenderness factor compared to the uh, the length of this being 175 feet, I don't think there's another, and I can only find 160 feet on um, a truss system that worked that long, and it's in the United Emirates, I think it is. And it also has a different shape. It's crowned in the middle, and it comes down, so it's, it's, it's totally going upwards and then downwards. That's an example. Exaggerated uh, visual for you with my mouse. This one is more flat in design. It doesn't have the higher the ratios that you would you would expect um, for it. So this is 170 feet. You would expect almost um, 34 feet in height of of these members here, the truss system to hold it together. Now the truss system can't just work without a top cord. So this acts as the top. Cord. Remember, I said I'll give and I'll take back. So then the deck, the canopy up top acts as the top cord, and this will be the lower cord in a truss system. 
but the trusses, the cord down the bottom is made larger for a walking deck. Keep in mind that you have a ADA requirement, so this deck has to be so, so level. I think it pitches three, three inches from here to here, which in 15 feet, the bridge is 31 feet or something, you know, let's just call it 15 feet, with the obstructed areas being the uh, center post column, with the columns and whatever they have with uh, uh, tables and chairs. Mm. So the handicapped person comes up, works their way around in a wheelchair all the way around and, and out, one side or the other, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, here's number 11 again. So you need this for part of the cord. You need the upper the upper um, canopy. In a typical design, you could eliminate this section here. You can eliminate, if I call this A, B, and C, you can eliminate between A, B, and you can eliminate between B and C. It could go over and come to here, and the rest of the deck would survive. Uh, it would be that shape there. These are uh, zero Zero, zero sum, typically. Zero low bearing. So, um, but you need this because it supports the cord now. And that load comes to transfer down this column. This is why this column is not as great as you would think it would be to support the entire deck. Well, because this truss system is supporting it. And this will be under compression. Now, let's talk about the crack. This... Under, the, under United Emirates' study that I found, they did a 30-foot model before they did the 160-foot bridge uh, truss design. And what they found, and they could not explain, was why if you uh, had these sharp, acute 45-degree angles or less, or less, or less, that cracking hap happened here, and if you can visualize under the canopy, and there. Uh, but they they found out that if they make a radius here and there, get rid of the 45s, the cracking was no longer um, an issue. So this is what they did. They they then got rid of the 40 the acute angles, and they still designed everything the same. But they now concreted it on a, a, a radius. And so these don't have it in the real construction on this bridge. These are still left with acute. Uh, you know, they're, 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 there's something to be thought about. Now back to this fancy design. So it doesn't have the ratios that you would think would be typical for slenderness to length factor, the slenderness factor. Um, so they decided they don't. Need that let go with that slender slender factor, and they'll resolve it. My thinking, they said, we'll resolve it with the bottom cord, the bottom deck. We're going to make it so strong uh, that this load is going to be so insignificant to it, including the pipes, that it's going to be able to take this load. But remember, there's no post tensioning going down the center here, so all this load from this canopy and the the pipes not not present at this time will transfer down the center of this deck and it will tra transfer that load from side to side. To, it has to make it to these post-tension cables and it will do that using rebar. No longer will it do it than post-tension cables as they showed in their drawings. They're going to do it using steel rebar uh, rated at, I don't know, 60,000 PSI, shear rating or tensile rating, um, rather. <sighs> All right, so troll me on that. Um, so now we have the load, the, the load. So we're going to end this with, because I, this video will get too long if I try to conclude all my information with you. But take note here. Imagine you're post-tensioning now. You don't need this concrete to start post-tensioning. This, this, this uh, node is not required unless it's going to hold the uh, trumpet, as I told you, got transformed you on another video. The, the uh, collar, the, uh, the point that holds the plates in place so you can do the post-tensioning. 
Imagine now you try to post tension. There's just a steel in here now, the rod. You would post tension. You would just, this would bow down right now. As you try to crank on this, this deck would bow. You can clearly see that if this concrete wasn't there and you had a steel rod from here to here and you started cranking in, this deck would no longer be able to maintain flat after you kept loading it. A lot of the load would transfer down number 10. Remember, that's where the bridge cracked also. It cracked, it failed here and here. But this one was already post-tension, the top. That's my cat eating. This was already post-tension at the top. This one was already loaded, if you will. That created a tension force down the bottom, forces going this direction and this direction. So they wanted to balance this diagonal, which I call a column a lot of times in other videos. I apologize for my conversion. As you post tension this, you then have to bring these two into equilibrium so you don't cause this column, this diagonal, to be imbalanced in, in pressure. So you, you dial it up to make this equal. My guess is they had some cracking here or here and possibly even in the middle. I don't think it was in the middle. I think it was going to be where the uh, United Emirates stuff showed the cracking was here and here, and they wanted to close it up. Um, and they just said, let's tighten up the post tension at and close that crack up. Doing so, imagine no concrete here, as I just said. And now also when you've got this break here, it's another sliding point. It's a factor that it's no longer connected. It just doesn't work anymore. You just can't. It's another factor when you have a, a moving joint. The, the, the crack. All right, so these two need to be in balance, this one and this one. 10 and 11 need to be in balance to support the, the uh, truss system, if you will. This is my evaluation at this time. Always subject to change in, from data. All right, now the uh, truss system, these all need to be in balance. You can't have, let's just be kind of, let me see if I can just put it this way. Say this was 100 kips and the load on this one was 150 kips. They're no longer in balance. This is has 150. This has 50 more thousand, uh, 50 kips more pressure than than this one. This one's pulling down more. It's these two aren't equal at the node at the joint, creating a an issue, creating a imbalance at the plate, if you will, trust plate. But this is going to be a node in, in my statements. This imbalance is no good. These two need to be balanced. You need to know what this one is so you can balance this one. The crack, irrespective of the crack, you don't care. Once you, once you take these two out of balance, you create an issue right there. If you were to crank on this and this leaving this out of the picture, if you create 300,000 kips on this and you've got 100,000 kips on this, what's going to happen? You're going to pull down this one. But you're going to ultimately, you're going to have to crack this bridge for this to for make movement downwards. And as you load this, you're compressing. You will, ducks. The ducts here, they're not full the ducts all the way down. They're, they're tubes. But you will crack those ducts in half. You will, you will crush them. Remember, there's no post-tensioning in the middle here. Uh, you, will, you will have a limited, here's a, say a duct's here, and let's call a duct right about here, an empty tube, an empty duct. There was, it was not, it was, uh, well, full or not full. It was filled with cable and not filled with cable. It wasn't grouted, so it, it's a void. And that gives you the ability to pull this deck downwards. And that's where your break would happen in this deck. Once you create a break in this deck, you've also changed the load pass of the post-tensioning cable. It's no longer to act like a top plate, a top cord. It's now coming down the cable, and instead of going to here, it transfers all this extra load onto 10 and 11. So imagine the cable's coming through. They come, they dip ever so slightly. Let's call it three inches. They come down three inches here and back up three inches here. But the load has to pit stop here and then continue on to the end. At that point, you're, you're, in, a, you're in an imbalance. You've got now all the load of the deck. You created these kips here of 100 and let's say 50,000 kips or 200,000 kips. And you've got this now. And this is only, this is already trying to hold up on this joint also. It's also creating a force, uh, um, a force is acting on it, all of it downwards, all of it downwards. So it's loading there. This deck then says, this deck and all the load transfer from this top cord, top plate, transfers to the, this is cracked, it's transferred now 
down number 11, which is the long diagonal, and is transferred down number 10, the shorter, stockier, up more upright diagonal. It can take more load. This can take, being both of them equal in size, this can take more load than this one can. This is a longer, slenderer product. So this cracks, the load transfers to here and here. It tries to hold the bridge up once it's, once it, once it's cracked. These two don't push away. This doesn't push out this way, and this doesn't push out that way. It tries to hold the load. As it does it, this buckles and it no longer can hold it. It gets shaky legs, okay? We're buckling. Sergio's leg no longer can hold. The load is once it's buckled, it's now it's 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 at the point it's not coming back. That buckling at this point. The load is 100 percent left on to number 10 at that 100 percent It's it's now a significant amount of load. The majority of the load is now transferred to number 10 because it's no longer no, this can no longer can hold it. This just creates a load path. From number from up here at the node where it's cracked already, and the low path comes down, cracking all of its number ten, cracking here. So we see two points of failure here and here. The deck folds in, falls to the ground. As it falls to the ground, this is just a hinge. When you see all the broken and everything else, it falls down. This just gets deter deteriorated in a hinge effect. Of course, you're going to get some blowing out the back side uh, as it hinges and fails. And as this buckle, as this, the loads are buckling, now you're getting the forced effect of, as it's buckling, you can get the, uh, the rod to push its uh, grouting member, where it's grouted in the back. You can get it to push out at that point. It's a, it's a pushing force, if you will. All right, hope this was somewhat helpful. For clarity, between numbers 10 and 11 on the bottom deck is where it broke the load transfer between the two of them. And at the mid-span, roughly, and that's where the new correct, uh, as I recall, happened. Can't find an image of that, but that's how I better recall. My mouse was in the wrong configuration uh, when I was narrating. Again, thanks for watching, and take care. You can subscribe. I'd appreciate it.